Hey guys, how's it going? Today is a gorgeous day. Gorgeous day to do projects out here in the garden. I've got a couple of things I would like to plant and a few updates that I would like to show you. You can see that it's slightly overcast. The sun kind of keeps coming in and out a bit, but our high is 78, 79 today. Yesterday it was in the high 80s though, which means we had a lot of wind. So I'm starting out here, topping up this fountain. We did turn all the fountains off and we do try to do that if we know there's gonna be wind, we, just so that we don't waste a bunch of water just flying out. But we haven't added any water to this fountain since the first day we set it up, which it's been several days now. And you guys, I love it. I love it so much. Like I create excuses for myself to come out here more than I usually do, just so I can drive by it and look at it or just sit out here and enjoy the sound. I mean, look at it. It's just so glorious and so peaceful. And I'm so glad we decided to go with a fountain out here instead of planting. There's so much going on out here in terms of plants and there will continue to be, even when we kind of revamp the space, having something really weighty in the center is so wonderful. And I'm not having to add too much water. I just turned the hoses on. You can see we're just like, an inch or two down right there. But this is the update I wanted to give you out here because our sunspot sunflowers are just beginning to bloom. Remember when we planted all of these things? Oh, look, at that. look at that sunflower. Just starting to open. Our cosmos are awesome. The zinnias are just spectacular. And I know I did show you the zinnias here recently. Aren't they amazing? Oh my gosh, I mean, this is where our driveway is. So whenever anybody or whenever we drive in and out of the property, you get to look over here at these gorgeous flowers. Oh, so pretty, but you can see the sunspots are doing exactly what I was hoping they would do. They're just tall enough to peek over all the other things. So I tried to do that on purpose. Like I tried to put varieties of zinnias that I thought would stay shorter than the California Giants which is the second row in this first row, but they're all about the same size. So they're all roughly three feet tall. And then we have our Cosmos, which there are some varieties taller than others like Rubenza. And there's a pink variety down that way, which are a little taller. And then the Sunspots, which usually are right around three to four feet tall. These are definitely that. I wanna say this one's almost as tall as me. I mean, pretty close, I'm five four. Just to give you an idea of the range here, but they are so pretty and the pollinators absolutely love them. It's still chilly out. The honeybees are already working, but they're full of buds. And I just thought you might enjoy seeing the progression here. Look at the Ribenza. Aren't they spectacular? I just picked a bunch of these and put them inside our house. Look at this, look at that right there. So much pollen, look at the legs. Ah, <laughs> look at the legs on that honeybee. They're just loaded. Right here is where our Cosmos had a bit of a rough start. I didn't realize there was holes in the drip tape and you know, we just had seeds in the ground. So when the drip tape came on, I was not standing here to see it and it just shot seeds out, you know, willy nilly. So it moved the seeds around just enough to create a little bit of a hole, which honestly is fine. Look at this view. Oh, it's so pretty. We've got a nice big sunspot right here. Look at that. Oh, are they sleeping? Oh, no, no. just the absolute best. And I love these double pinks. These were, uh, put the name on the screen, double rose, double Dutch, something like that. I don't know. I love them. They have got the most fluffy blooms, hugely long stems. I mean, you can cut them as long as you need to. Look at that. Oh my. Okay. A little hard to traverse. I had meant to space rows out a little bit more this year, but then, you know, whatever. Just get excited and I just want to plant and not mess with infrastructure sometimes. But I just wanted to give you an update and what a great day to do that when it's a slightly overcast, nice and cool, everything's looking fresh this morning. And the fountain is already done filling. Also, this is Sweet Annie Artemisia. And I hear from you guys, because I've never grown it before, that if you let it go to seed, it comes up everywhere. I think we're going to pull it this week. I don't want it to go to seed. It looks like a complete weed. They look like giant kochia plants. <laughs> in fact, when my dad came over here, he was like, is that kochia? Are you growing kochia in there? No, I am not. The next area I want to update you on is in front of the Hartley and I want you to watch first 
the progression of a couple of these projects. Here we are. PB has been moved out, which you'll be able to see here in a second, and the area has been beautifully mulched. And in true Eastern Oregon fashion, right after the mulch was laid, the windstorm came through, and I just thought, oh no. Especially because this willow tree, you know, reacted poorly to the grass being torn out in front of it. It has stopped yellowing though. We've really been diligent about moving just a slow trickle hose around the whole area underneath this tree. And uh, yeah, it's starting to kind of reverse <laughs> and it, or at least stop yellowing. There's still some yellow leaves in there. And honestly, it did not make as much of a mess as I thought it was going to. But look at Hebe. You can see her and she's actually working with the, the uh, shape of the tree, the normal shape of the tree. We moved her about 11 feet. I measured it, 11 feet out from where she was. She is thick. <laughs> He is dense. Just the top portion of her weighs 505 pounds. Paul and Bethany looked it up. <laughs> it took five of us to move her out. We took her off and laid her on the ground and this is where she was, right through here. So you see all the stuff I was having to cut away so we could see her. So she was here, which probably worked when this willow was a lot younger. But as the willow aged, you know, it sent out great big branches here and I want to just work with the shape of things instead of fighting them. So moving her out here, the branches naturally grow in this shape. Like I have not trimmed this tree for, oh, I mean once, I trimmed it once early on this season and this is just how it naturally grows. Not to say that we won't have to do some trimming later, but it's gonna be so much easier to have her here than have her tucked in back there. Anyway, we moved her off the base, moved this base piece, and then we even moved the concrete that was poured underneath her just so that, I don't know, I don't know if that adds extra stability, but She's looking really good right here. Oh, I love it. And the mulch is beautiful. They always do such a gorgeous job with the mulching. And um, this stone walkway I'm really happy with. I'm happy with the size of the stones. I'm happy with how our feet land on the, the rocks. And that was one thing when we were putting the stones down, we were both, both Aaron and I, which we have different length of legs, so different strides, we both walked the stones and we both felt like they were comfortable. And I think that's the most important part. I don't think I would want them any further apart from one another. And these look very 
prominent right now, but they won't. These beds are gonna be planted up more cottage style and there will be things all around them to where, I mean, you'll be able to see it to get onto it, but it won't stick out like it is now. We'll do either boxwoods, we'll continue on here and then have this all back planted with something, or I might even take off with lavender from there and do like a lavender border. And then we'll just have a bunch of beautiful things. Hey, Douglas, don't even instigate. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. Are you as playful as Russell? Yep. And this sod is looking amazing. Many people said that it might start looking worse before it looks better. Like a lot of times sod goes in, especially with as hot as it was, and then it starts to yellow a little bit and stress, and it just hasn't. <laughs> it hasn't at all. It looks so good. So this whole area was mulched except for around the stones. Let me walk over there. I don't want to walk over the mulch though, so I'm going to go around. I left this side alone because we've got stone work to do in here, and I also need to do some digging of things, and uh, we're going to be planting some things in here as well. I kind of have a feeling I'm going to, well, I'm going to work back to front for sure. I want to put some evergreen interest in here. Um, and the big locust trees coming out later on this fall. So this area is going to need to be a little bit more flexible, but you can see right here, the stones were left unmulched because even though they feel comfortable to walk on, the stones are just a little bit too small. So I think we're gonna swap a few of them out for something bigger. It feels really comfortable to me, but Aaron likes the stones to be a little bit bigger and I'm indifferent, so that's fine. We'll swap them out. Oh, look at that. <laughs> there go the sprinklers. So if you look this way, you can see Hebe over there. Doesn't that just look sharp? And I love seeing her unearthed. Seemed like kind of a waste to have her tucked in there where you couldn't even see her. This tree's doing something weird. That's a red point maple. You see it's already trying to turn color for fall. None of our other ones are, which means it's probably stressed. It doesn't look chlor chlorotic though. I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes trees do weird stuff. Maybe that one's affected by the grass being pulled too. I'll show you one more thing before we go to the area where I'm gonna be planting. With all the wind that came through last night, it did some damage to our containers over here on the east side to the salvia. And this is an example of what I was talking about earlier when you put salvia, the play in the blues variety at least, in as a centerpiece, you kind of have to prepare yourself for this possibility because the plant gets so big and the uh, branches can be a little bit brittle. This sort of thing might happen. The wind came just whipping through here. You can see that this one's broken off. And you can see that this one didn't all the way break and it will wilt as soon as it gets warm today. It was completely wilted down last night. So it's something we'll remove. Anyway, big bummer. There's a broken branch on that salvia over there. And I'm not sure, taking a look over at this one. This one had a little bit more protection, but yeah, it's splayed it out pretty good. Look at that. Yep, that one's broken. Oh, yep, see that right there? I'm looking at this big branch though, thinking maybe it'll do well in some water for a while. Give it a little bit more life. I just wanted to show you that. It will not ever keep me from planting this variety though because it doesn't happen all the time. It just happens occasionally if we have kind of that weird gust of wind that hits the plant just right. But this plant is so productive and so beautiful. It's one that I'll, I'll keep on planting. All the salvia around the end caps of the Hartley made it through unscathed. That salvia looks good too. And this one made it, which is more exposed than anything. Okay, so we're back up here by the brick walkway. I think what I would like to do today is maybe roll some of these rocks away and clean up some of this dirt. See how it kind of goes up a little bit like a raised bed. I don't really want that raised bed to kind of come around this corner anymore because we want to get the boxwoods in. Um, and we'll probably, we are, well, we will have a flower bed still here. And what we'll do is continue on, see this like little stone wall. We'll continue on to the end of the boxwoods and that's where their bed will start. So basically eliminating this right here and all the extra soil and the stones. And I would like to maybe get at least this row of boxwoods planted today. So from that corner to the opening and then from this side over to that corner. I am still a little bit undecided about what I wanna do in this area. So I'm gonna leave it for a second. But if I can get the boxwoods planted to here, that's less of them that we have to water over here. I'm not even sure that we have enough boxwoods right there to finish the whole square. We initially did, but I had to steal some for another project. So I'm not sure how far they will actually stretch. And these are the winter gem boxwoods, which is what we have here already. And we're basically just mirroring the rest of this 
on the other side. So I'm probably gonna be counting bricks <laughs> to see exactly where to plant each boxwood so they all line up with one another. Anyway, that's the goal for the day. So I think the first thing we need to do, I need to grab a gator and a shovel and uh, we need to get this area excavated. You know what? I wonder if Aaron could bring the tractor bucket in here. Just scrape that stuff up. That would be so handy. I'm gonna go ask him. Okay, Aaron's got the bucket. You think this will work? We'll get, oh, we gotta move all those. Uh, oh yeah, I'll get those moved quick. This is gonna save me so much time. I'm gonna move all the boxwoods, then we're gonna get this area leveled. All right guys, we got the rocks removed, dirt scraped away. I even did a little tree pruning so that we could get under the ash tree a little bit easier. And we placed the boxwoods. We also hashed out, we hashed out the design over here. And I think we're both satisfied. Yeah. That was not very enthusiastic. I, I am completely satisfied. <laughs> He's completely satisfied, okay. So here it is, you guys. Now we realized after Aaron was done that this little corner, I don't know if you should maybe get in there and see if you can scrape up a little bit more. It's a little high, but we could try raking. It's just so hard with a hand tool because there's so many roots Yeah, right there. So <laughs> the kids are playing. Yeah. And we figured out where all the boxwoods sat on the other side of the patio and got all of these lined up. And I am just so excited about this. And it's really nice not to have boxwoods sitting here in a pile on the driveway. So anyway, I just wanted to show you before we started to uh, plant these. Now we are not going to be planting the ones right here today. I, I suppose we could. I mean, there's no reason to not. Yeah. We'll just pick up and plant the other ones when we get them. Yeah. So I stole boxwoods for that little planter area. I stole four of them, which wouldn't have been enough anyway. But here is what our project is going to be right here. We are going to bring the boxes all the way over, which is really what Aaron wanted, so that the box around this area was symmetrical. And I think I'm going to end it with a spherical shaped boxwood. We're going to move the benches elsewhere, and then we'll repeat that on this side. So a sphere shape followed by the hedge, which what we're going to have to do in order to get that done, we're going to have to take out a little bit of this hedge. So because it's offset from where we need it to be, we're going to take out from here just to the curve right to about here. So we'll save this little piece and then we're going to replant in line with the other hedge here, which will actually make it a little wider and nicer to navigate this walkway here. We're gonna take out the bricks from where they ended because that's where they ended when we took out the concrete sidewalk. That's what was here. It just met up with the bricks. So we had that removed. We're gonna take out the bricks just until the square portion of the fireplace area. And then we'll pick up with flagstones here and create a walkway out. We're gonna keep this right here. We're gonna plant more right along here and I'm going to repeat the sphere boxwood. And that all is gonna be repeated on the other side. So it'll be a nice wide opening with the walkway, two spherical shaped boxwoods and boxwood hedges running on either side. We're gonna take out the wisteria because it's just, it's a maniac of a plant and it hardly ever blooms. What about these? These will go somewhere else. I am just not wild about them on this patio. I'm not either. I so. Do. You know that. <laughs> I know, so it's perfect. Yeah. You know, maybe we can put Picture. them out to the, no, we don't put them, I love them. Yeah. Oh, did you fall, babe? Oh. Are you okay? Let me see. Let me you see. get a little boo-boo. So anyway, we'll take out the wisteria. We'll take out, probably there's some little perennials in there. I'll move and there's a smoke bush. I'd like to do a little bit more evergreen interest around the chicken coop anyway. And then I think the pathway will still lead us out toward the chicken coop, like kind of toward where the pallet walkway is right there. Uh, we might have a little flagstone or stepping stone pathway that leads us out that way too. It kind of just depends on how this 
area evolves. But I'm really happy with what we landed on design-wise. Erin's happy with it. We just don't have enough boxwoods to complete it. So anyway, at this point, all we need to do is get all of the holes dug. And we're just gonna use a nine inch auger to do that. And then we need to get them planted and watered in. We need to kind of pull up drip in this whole area. Like we pulled up a bunch of drip in this space and it hasn't been functioning right anyway. So we need to rerun drip as well. That will both water the boxwoods and it connects into this whole flower bed area. But doesn't it look so great? to see a wall, like some defining feature on this side. I got sap all over my hands earlier today. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna walk through from the front here so you can see the whole pr perspective, toys and all. Standing in the parking area, you walk through here. Oh, I can see the beautiful Hartley over there. We span this direction, the seating area. Now that it's more boxed in, I feel like we need more chairs and such around, especially now that the benches will move somewhere else. Maybe we put in another furniture grouping right here. We sit here all the time, every single day, multiple times a day. We also sit there when company comes over and I notice that we have to go scrounge up chairs from other places. So having more furniture out here would be ideal. All right guys, so all that's left is to get these in the ground. So let's do that and then we'll take a final look at the area. All right, guys, the boxwoods are in. They look amazing. We do have a little bit of work to do in terms of gravel, like patching up the gravel in this space and then remulching some spots, but uh, we don't have the gravel here on hand, so we're gonna have to go get that. But I am just thrilled to have some definition in this space, and it's not done yet. It won't be until we can get our hands on some more of this variety of boxwoods in a similar size. But honestly, like we used a mix of five gallon and I think they're two gallon canned boxwoods and I can almost not tell a difference. And that's the thing, sometimes you might buy a five gallon boxwood that's been in a five gallon can for a while and you can absolutely tell the difference when they've had a chance to root in and fill that can a little bit, as opposed to a five gallon that has just been bumped up from the previous size. Those are typically a little bit undersized. So sometimes you can get a hold of them that look the same, in which case if you can get all in two gallon, gallon size that look like a five gallon or similar. Save yourself a little bit of money that way. But it looks so good to have some definition in this space. I am absolutely loving it. So this is the first one we started with here and then turned the corner and took off. I did try to stop with each one. I sized it up. I tried to make sure we were the same distance away from the bricks here. There are two boxwoods, these two right here, that make it look like it kind of goes whoop but there were so many roots, I don't even know what from in this spot. We had a really hard time, but when you're doing a hedge, it's not that big of a deal if you're off by a couple inches or so, because in the end they will grow and we can uh, hedge them up to meet the other ones. However, these two, they're not rocks. I thought they were rocks, they're concrete. They came out of this hole right here, both of these. 
I noticed when I was trying to uh, make the hole a little bit deeper with the auger after Aaron came through and kind of pre-did all the holes, pre-drilled pre them, I noticed there was, you know, something in there, so rock or concrete or something. And so I went ahead and planted this thinking, well, you know, if it's an inch or two off, it doesn't matter. But it was pretty egregious. It was off by quite a lot. So I thought, well, maybe it's worth poking around with a shovel to see what what's in there, what that rock is. Maybe I'll be able to move it. And oh my gosh, when these things came prying up out of the hole, I was kind of amazed. All right, moving this direction, you can see I still have the hose out. I did water in all the boxwoods, but I'm giving this birch tree a slow drink. I think it will like that. But they just look so beautiful. So much definition. And right here, we turned the corner and took off as far as we could down that way. I think I've got room for, oh, I don't know, two to three more boxwoods right here. What I want to end up with is kind of a larger sphere. So we might just do one, eh, no, we'll probably do two boxwoods and then uh, one more right here, which I'll let grow bigger. And we will, instead of hedging it into more of a square shape, we'll hedge it or trim it rather into a sphere shape. And then of course we have to rehab this side once we have the boxwoods to do so. Oh, it's so pretty. I'm so happy with it. So now we can look at this side and slow pan over to this side and they look similar. <laughs> Of course, these have had a little a leg up. They've been in the ground longer, but all of these, so they're all the winter gem variety. And we put this in because we were trying to, uh, well, I like this variety, but we were trying to match what was already in this space, which was winter gems. That's what's along the pathway over there. That's what's along this walkway here. And it's what we've got over there in the Persephone garden. We switched over to green velvets around the Hartley to try out a different variety. And then of course, all the way down the west side, we've got the sprinters. These kind of jobs are so much fun to check off the list because they're just so tangible. I mean, you just see such a difference when you get something like this done. So I'm very happy to have these in. We'll get them all, like the whole drip system all worked out in this space so that they'll all be getting water now and we won't have to water them with the hose, which I know all of us will be thrilled about. So that's it, you guys. Just a few updates and getting the boxwoods in the ground. It's just been a great day. So thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next one. Bye.